Hi guys, what's going on? Welcome back to 55 Fathoms. So, it is time for my spoiler review of a Kung Fu Panda 4. <music> Let's jump into it because I got a lot of thoughts about uh, this movie. So, Kung Fu Panda 3 came out, minor step down from the previous two films. Uh, definitely the weakest in the franchise. And then we had a bit of a Kung Fu Panda drought. Then Kung Fu Panda the Dragon Knight came on to Netflix at three seasons. It wasn't, again, it was kind of not as good as the movies were, but that was expected. But this was like an official kind of show that was made as like a continuation. They never talk about it in the movies. So maybe this happened ages ago. I don't know. But anyway. Then we get to Kung Fu Panda 4, and let me say, listen guys, I don't want to say this, but Kung Fu Panda 4 is the weakest in the Kung Fu Panda uh, trilogy, or, uh, in the Kung Fu Panda quadrilogy of movies. Um, on the enjoyability level, rewatchability level, I'd rewatch this one more than number three but on a on a story level it, it's it's the weakest film you know going off uh, i mean uh, the, the furious five uh, there's a lot of false advertising with this movie which i think hurt hurt this movie a lot because like tai lung was in the poster so we were like oh we don't have a major role he was marketed very heavily in the movie uh, in the trailer but i kid you not What's in the trailer is literally how long he's in the movie for. And then add, like, 30 seconds. Like, I'm not even joking. Um, and uh, while everyone was like, they should have made him the Dragon Warrior. I, I disagree with that because that was the whole thing with the first film. You know, he turned villainous. It wasn't his destiny. Like, <laughs> like he couldn't become the Dragon Warrior. Like, it wasn't set in stone for him to become. So even if you made him the the uh dragon warrior you'd be like well it's not his destiny he got what just because he's turned good no it, it was never made for him um but i did listen if we got more context like if we got ugwe and if we got like a flashback where ugwe, ugwe was like a counselor to tai long tai long or something and he spent years and he's you know dealing through all of it and he's like and then he says, maybe Uguay was right about you to Poe. I think that would have paid it off better. And I think people were caught off guard were like, with like, oh my God, why is he, why is he complimenting Poe? He's had 15 years to think about Poe. He goes through everything. Uguay's probably there in the spirit realm with him. Um, so I, I was expecting him. Like, it's a minor redeem. I did like the redemption. I The thing with Tai Lung, I wish he was just in it more. Obviously, he can't stay evil uh, forever. And, you know, when he says, see you on the other side, Dragon Warrior, I was like, yo, when Poe gets to the spirit realm, their battles will be legendary. They're just going to be fine for fun. It's going to be so good. But anyway, uh, talking of villains, the chameleon is the weakest villain. I don't have any problem saying that. She is the weakest villain in the Kung Fu Panda uh, quadrilogy. Again, I'm drawing many parallels with number three. Um, she's very much like Kai. Kai was stealing chi, and she's stealing kung fu. But the only difference is the people she steals the kung fu from don't turn green and are kept. They keep their consciousness. They just will use their kung fu abilities. Uh, so she's a carbon copy of Kai. Strip away all the backstory of Kai and all the interestingness of the past three villains. I'm not saying that Kai was the best villain, he wasn't, but she's got nothing interesting. There's no like, there's nothing there to say like why she's become a villain. Fight scenes, those were a great part of the film. I really enjoyed the fight scenes. Probably, let me think now, probably the best in the Kung Fu Panda quadrilogy. There's a lot of animation things, like with modern day animation, with colours. Because that's the thing now, blinding colours and paint and fast paced movement and frames dropping. 
that's used in this, and that's they use that to their advantage. Absolutely, fight scenes are the strongest in the whole uh, quadrilogy. You see how Poe has evolved, but how he's still doing it his way. A lot of people were like, "Why is Poe still so bad at fighting?" It's not that he's bad at fighting; it's that he's doing it in his own way that he was taught by Shifu in movie one with. You know, obviously, the food. Um, I really enjoyed... Like, you could tear them apart. So, when the chameleon was a villain, the villain would have scales. I enjoyed that uh, artistic detail. It, it made it easy for the audience to be like, okay, this is the chameleon. This is blah de blah um, Another bit of false advertising. Shen... They, they said that Shen and Kai were going to be in this film. So, that was like, oh, maybe they're predominant roles. Uh, Shen and Kai don't speak. Uh, in this film, Shen does like a little scream when the chameleon takes his powers, and Kai does like a little bull roar when the chameleon takes away his uh, kung fu. That's it. And then they bow. Although Shen did not bow, what a beast. Kai bows with uh, everyone else, with Tai Lung, after he says, Maybe Ugwe was right about you, they will bow. Um, but they don't say anything else. And again, with the false marketing, yeah, it's cool when the chameleon changes into Kai and Shen, but, like, again, like when she changes into Tai Lung, there's none of that emotional connection to the other villains, and she's only Kai and, and Shen for, like, ten seconds, I'm not even joking, she's like, she changes into them and she just changes back to Tai Lung, and all I wanted from this film was a Tai Lung v Po uh, rematch, I didn't get that, I got a bit of a chameleon versus Po rematch, so I'll take what I can get, uh, Shifu is in this, he's not in this as much as in the other four, which I kind of liked because it, like, shows Poe not really needing him, and I guess you could make an argument, the reason him and, and the Furious Five went in the film a lot is because Poe's finally, like, branching out, he's, you know, his own individual now, he doesn't need them, which you could make a case for, but then again, people want to see those characters, um, but from what Shifu was in, he was, he was great, I love Shifu, man, he was really good, he wasn't something that this movie, like, messed with, it was Shifu being Shifu, telling Poe, you know, you must take on this piece of training, and then Poe being like, I don't want to do that, uh, The Furious Five, though, we have to talk about it, they're not in it, I, they said, that the people said they were in it, I'll tell you when they're in it, they are not in it at all, and then the credits start to roll, um, and Shen, or Ven, or whatever, whatever the sh silly fox is called, gets introduced to the Furious Five, and then the credits start to you. so you have names on the screen, you can't, you can barely see them, so I was like, what, <laughs> what? Um, let's get on to talk about Aquafina's fox character, um, I, I am part of the Aquafina, uh, I don't think it's hate, I think it's fatigue, she's casting everything, she was cast in Migration, she was cast in uh, Shang-Chi, she was cast in this, she was cast in another movie, and I cut The Little Mermaid, that was it, she's cast in The Little Mermaid, um, Hollywood love her, uh, and I think that is what makes people hate her, if, for want of a better word, uh, this character, and it kind of, it kind of goes in with my big thing of, about this, there's nothing gripping, there was nothing gripping about the villain, there was no deeper meaning in all the other, even in Kung Fu Panda 3, there is deeper meaning, deeper levels. Uh, this is the most childish Kung Fu Panda film, and it doesn't have, like, a double meaning, it's just uh, quite a wacky, silly adventure, which is enjoyable, but Kung Fu Panda films are renowned for having this deep, you know, meaning to them, and... The fox character, the whole thing is this friendship between Poe and, and the fox. And I felt it with Poe. I didn't feel it kind of with the fox. Like, Poe was trying with this friendship. Kind of like Jack Black was trying. And I just, I don't think the fox kind of gravitated towards Poe the same way he did to her. And I think that's what makes the relationship, like, not work, the friendship. Um, and to just be given the title of Dragon Warrior after, like, one movie, uh, he's barely met her, we, the audience barely met her, I think that was a cop-out, and no, I don't think any of the Furious Five should have been, um, 
Dragon Warriors. But, okay, so my problem is, like, Kung Fu Panda 5, you should have had two movies, and then she should have become, like, the Dragon Warrior. Because it feels very rushed for the audiences. Obviously, this is, like, 15, 16 years for us as audience members. So, it feels rushed. Um, comedy, uh, comedy's fine. There are a few things that make me chuckle. There's a lot of, like, slapstick physical humour. Uh, a lot of, like, silly, you know, po humour. There's some fart jokes in here, which I don't think we've ever had in a Kung Fu Panda film. I don't know that for sure, though. I'll have to check that. Soundtrack is great, though. Uh, probably, what, uh, probably one of the best in the quadrilogy. Maybe second best. Um, under, like, Kung Fu Panda 2, uh, and this film did give us, uh, Tenacious D's cover of Hit Me Baby One More Time, which is better, definitely miles better than Britney Spears' uh, own song, uh, man, I can't stop listening to that, it is so good, and it appears in the credits when the Furious Five semi-return, um, yeah, so, you know, they're planning to make two more films, so they have, like, I hope they have, uh, a new trilogy in, they, in their head, Kung Fu Panda 5 and then Kung Fu Panda 6. Um, am I excited for this new trilogy? No, because uh, Kung Fu Panda 4, I think, let me down. I think it let a lot of people down. It's the most childish, it's it's the mo- it's the it's the weakest, okay? It's the weakest of the Kung Fu Panda movies. Um... Not really much else to say. Uh, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. So yeah, Kung Fu Panda 4. Uh, it's, it's good. It's a good film. It's a, as I said, it will be very rewatchable. More rewatchable than uh, number 3. But, you know, it, it was missing that substance. For me, I feel. But guys, what did you think of Kung Fu Panda 4? Have you got a chance to see it? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching me ramble. And yes, hit me baby one more time.